Welcome back everybody to another brand new episode of the Good Bit Podcast. Welcome in. I'm not going to lie, I'm really enjoying the current format that we've been doing, which is having a different guest on all the time, speaking about you know their history in the performing arts and having a favourite film and why it's their favourite film. Whereas now, that's actually not happened this week and we are back in Good Bit Studios and we are absolutely uh, digging at the bottom of the barrel, trying to get an episode done. No offence <laughs> to Sister Rachel and, Ke- and Sister Keris, Keris. I was say Sister Keris, who is Rachel's friend. Is <laughs> We've decided that we are now performing arts. Hey, I have an arts degree. Rachel has an arts degree. Keris but has seen films. I got an A in higher drama. But C. It's almost a C, which is what we call each other. Mm-hmm. Keris and Chris. Well, it could be a YouTube show. It could be. I don't know who would watch it. I feel left out. We only have two microphones, so if one of the siblings sounds slightly further away, that's why. All right, so welcome everybody. We have another episode in store for you today. Thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're watching at home or if you're listening on your drive to work in the morning or if you're in a bath. I don't care when you're listening. Um, So we're actually doing an episode like this for three reasons. One, (laughs) One, because we don't have a guest lined up. So excuse me, what do what you call I'll us? Use to. Excuse me, why am I here then? Uh, the, I like the normal kind of format, right? We don't have that sorted this week. Number two, uh, we've got some new equipment. Don't know if you've been noticing. Uh, this isn't an, this is an old microphone, but oh. it's got a fancy orange. It's orange, but pop shield thing because Rachel's favorite color is orange. So we've got that here, and I've got a new microphone that I'm using for the first time. I'm just testing it out. So instead of just doing a random test, I thought let's do a whole episode. And I'm also recording with a PodTrack P4 Zoom recorder, which I believe is what other people use to record on the go. That's really interesting. I just thought you were going to say something. That's why. No, I, I was. I thought it was Pod Talk, and I was thinking about how there would be a like thing on TikTok called like Pod Talk. Welcome to Pod like, Talk. Talk, but it actually says Pod. Track, track. And I'm severely disappointed yes, by that so discovery. But that's okay. Anything could happen here. Anything could go wrong. So that's what we're here for. That's why we're filming. Uh, and the third reason is because um, I just saw this 30 day movie challenge thing on Twitter or X. And uh, I wanted to start it. I wanted to start doing like one a day or whatever. There's a fly in here. Uh, I wanted to do one every day. And just in preparation for that, I thought, why don't we record our version of the 30 day movie challenge and then Taylor's version good bit version thank you and Chris's version and it's just as a preview to what's going to be on the good bit X coming up which is at the good bit pod by the way good bit X are we calling it X now well, that's what it's called I bet uh, Jane, it's not called Twitter anymore. It's, if you oh. if you were to go on the laptop, that's just how old did the sound there. If you go on one of those laptop <laughs> things, if you use the interweb, you have to type in. Point. If you go on Google Chrome, then you, you have to so type in x dot com. You can't. Explorer. You can't put Twitter anymore, and they're also not no longer called tweets. The posts. Yeah, oh. I'd like to apologise for the bad language that's put in my mouth, but it makes me think of that like sounds like. Fuck you, Gwyneth Paltrow, you know what you did. Me, and Elon it's like, Musk. fuck you, Elon Musk, you know what you did. I think you have to speak a little bit louder. I'm not going to say that any louder. Uh, okay, I don't know, I'm just, this is a total trial but run, so it could be a disaster. That sounds okay. I shall yell. Okay, I shall. Keris has this covered. I shall She's project. Like, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. Uh, so yeah, we preview for what's going to be on Twitter slash X. Um, my answers may change. But I thought I'd get Sister Rachel in to ask me the 30 questions and I can prepare my answers and then Rachel and Keris can chime in with their answers yeah, as well. good luck getting us to not to give our input because... Well, since you're here, Lil C, you can tell me... D- we were just kind of chatting about this before we started recording. Do you have a favourite film? I do. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you? Yeah. I thought we were talking about how you never had a favourite film. Oh, no, she said she doesn't trust people who don't have a favourite film. I do have one. Should be a message out there to other listeners who don't have favourite film. Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? Get what are you doing? Film? What's your favourite well, film? Mine is The Ten Things I Hate About You. That's actually a fair shout. Yes. It's also been an episode on the Good Bit Podcast. Has it? It has, because that's why you watched it. Oh, it wasn't an episode of the Good Bit Podcast. Do you know why I watched it? Because you can, you can you need to keep refreshing that. We're, just be, we're being helpful. <laughs> okay, that's fine, thanks. Um, the reason that I watched it was because that was going through my oh, Disney no, Plus phase. That? Where I decided I can't decide what to watch. So what I'm going to do is just go on to Disney Plus, click Movies... And just like watch everything in order. Oh. 
Oh. Starting in alphabetical order, so it's the numbers first. Oh, so yeah. I started off with 101 Dalmatians. Then I watched 10 Things I Hate About You. Well, it was all the way around. It was 10 Things I Hate About You first, then 101 Dalmatians, and then I realised there was a 101 Dalmatians 2. Mm-hmm. I think it was actually called, it's called 102, 102 yeah. Dalmatians. And I was like, I ain't watching that. So I just gave <laughs> up. That was all he watched. That was it. But now, <laughs> but now the cinema has shown 101 Dalmatians, <laughs> and I think we should take that as a sign that we should do this. Yep. I think we should. Um, there's like, well, that was before Star was added. Mm-hmm. to Disney oh God, Plus there's so, much, so, more there's so much more and it's so, so many like more. B movies not to be confused with the B movie which by the way is so underrated apparently so I was so actually good. on TV when I was in London earlier oh, this, this year and I'm sitting there watching it going how funny is this movie I love Barry B. Benson <laughs> is that the name <laughs> yeah Barry B. Benson I obviously is watched it not that. like a whole lore about like Freddie Benson's mum from iCarly and like the B <laughs> oh, or am I making that up there is a whole like thing with oh, that isn't there I don't know if I heard that is before. Freddie, to do with Freddie like, Benson. Is it not something about like his dad was actually the bee from the bee movie or something? Oh, that would make so much sense. I don't know. But also, the thought left my brain. Okay. I'll let you know if it comes back. Well, the bee movie I watched when I was really young and I hadn't watched it in years and it was just on and I was sitting watching it just laughing away. I used to oh. have merch. Like bee movie, bee movie merch. merch. Like my, I had like a pencil case and like a full on like notebook. <laughs> I loved it. You used to. How? What happened to it? Did you throw it out? Yeah. Uh, I bet when you bought that, you were buzzing. Oh. What were you going to say? I was going to ask what a B movie is. Like, because you said oh. not to be confused with the B movie, but all I was thinking about was Barry B. Benton. So a B movie would be something that's like straight to DVD or like before Netflix or Disney Plus was a thing that was just streaming. Now streaming is a thing. <laughs> so The silence from the 2001 <laughs> babies that are like, <laughs> were like, things I'm that think of were... An example. Um, so technically like so Netflix originals yeah but now you, you can't call them B movies now because like they're big blockbuster things you know what I mean like an A movie would be like Avengers or like a big movie like that a B it. movie would be something that's not like that so mm-hmm. technically High School Musical and Camp Rock oh, were listed as B movies because they were straight to TV um, but obviously then they're, they're you know an exception but um, yeah that's what that would be no okay. pun intended I that understand um, so yeah, ten things I hate about you. Good shout. Mm-hmm. Is it a particular reason why it's your favourite film? Is it that scene at the end? Is it <laughs> is it thing that was his face? Heath Ledger Heath dancing Ledger, down the stairs. I mean, he looks amazing. Let's not. <laughs> is this be. peak Heath Ledger or is that Brokeback Mountain well, or The Dark Knight? I I Never. haven't seen that unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Sorry. So it was quite peak. He looked great in it, and then I absolutely I don't even know their names like the actors' names, but I love. Um, um, I think he's that. You, that need, boy. you need to use the microphone if you want to speak. The one, oh, what's his name? Joseph Levitt. Gordon. Joseph Gordon Levitt. Is he in it really? Did I say his name backwards? Then? Backwards, yeah. Joseph Gordon Levitt. Is that right? Okay, him. He's in it. He's the other main character. He looks great. And yeah, then the the two women leads are amazing. And um, the speech. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you amazing? I feel like you're quite like Cat. That's her name, isn't it? Yeah. You're quite like personality wise. Personality wise. Yeah, Keris is a bit like her. And I see it. It makes she's sense. Quite, she's quite bold. Very feminist. She's, she's like, a bit of a party gal. Yeah. Bit Not really. Fun. She's quite, quite introverted, but when she's out there, she's out there. That That is kind of you. Yeah. So. See, I'm doing it now. <laughs> That's um, probably why. Okay, good show. Maybe I'll have to rewatch it and then we can do it on the podcast as a full episode. I need you to speak about it for a whole hour. Could you do that? Yeah. Okay. I need to rewatch it. I'll get the her names. I'll research. Okay, that's right. <laughs> Learn their names. <laughs> it's my favourite movie, guys. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm, I'm bad with actors. Like, I'm terrible with actors. You're Not quite bad with, like, names and, like, knowing stuff, but I'm quite bad with, like, the fa- like I'm bad with the faces. Mm-hmm. So, like, you could be like, I know they're in something. I just don't know what. And I'm like, I've never seen this person before in my life. Rachel's got this thing, prospanganosa, where she doesn't actually, remember. We're not actually diagnosing me with this. People's faces. I think, I've, I think I've got the reverse of that. Which is, I feel like I recognise people. I feel like I know people, mm-hmm. and I've never met you. <laughs> mm. So whatever that would be, pros face. Can o- I don't know what that is. No, but that all stemmed from. Well, I always thought it, but when we watched The Prestige, um, <laughs> Not but, the but is that a Christopher Nolan film, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it has Christian Bale in it. And Three every times. every single time Christian Bale was on the screen, I went, "Who's that?" And Chris was like, "It's still Christian Bale." No, was just this with a moustache. Before or after we saw the Dark Knight trilogy. This was in before. the cinema. This was before. We we saw Batman Begins and the well, Dark Knight. I'd, I'd at the seen cinema. it before, but like yeah. a long time ago. And like I knew who Christian Bale was, but just not like 
I wasn't like you know yeah. obsessed with like the way I would like if Sebastian Stan came on the screen I'm not going to get mixed yeah, yeah. up I've seen everything that man does <laughs> but actually I haven't I haven't seen Bumpkins which is um, Pete Davidson's show and he's in like one episode of and I haven't seen Dumb Money yet which is I don't that even the know new one out, but we have to go even though it looks a bit frightening on it but All that's right. beside the point well that's fair enough um I don't know how we got into that, but there you go. We were talking about my Pros Panganosa. Pros Panganosa. I was going to ask you as well, um, I know this, but I'm going to pretend that I don't know this for the benefit of the episode. What have you been watching recently? Uh, have you been watching <laughs> any TV shows? Have you been binging anything? And that's me setting up the softball for this next story. So, once upon a time, there was a show called Criminal Minds. And I put off watching it for a very long time. And then I finished Gilmore Girls. I was like, there was like a hole in my life. And I was like, I need to watch something. So then I picked Criminal Minds because wonderful Iona Deveni, who is regular guest on the podcast these days, she it's one of her favourite shows. And so she was like, no, just watch it, you'll love it. And so I started it and watched 15 seasons <laughs> in like three months. <laughs> and I just finished it last night, except for um, like there's like the whole, what's it even called? Evolution, I think it's called. Criminal Minds Evolution. And it's like, a revised version like after covid basically it's like we came out in 2022 um but yeah that was a that, i didn't really realize i was at the end and i just yeah. kind of accidentally did and that was a bit traumatic for me actually so did you watch the 2022 one but i watched the first episode this morning how many episodes are there is that a whole season 10 i think so far which is season one and then i think that's it but then there is more coming out but there's a whole writer's strike just now right so and you're not, not liking the yet. fact that it's slightly different than before I don't like that there's no theme song, even though I skip it most times, it feels wrong. And it's filmed differently. It's filmed like, it's kind of shot like a film, I think, like a movie rather than a TV show. I don't know. Like, you can tell it's shot differently. I think it's got more of a budget. It also came up saying Star. Oh, okay. Maybe maybe that's it then. Um, Which it didn't used to do because it used to be like, I mean, it's been on since 2005. Yeah. But I totally know what you mean. I don't know whether that's officially called, but there is a difference between watching especially 2000s TV shows as opposed to like big blockbuster movies so that's absolutely it's a thing like it also this sounds so like dumb but it's like how do I explain this it's like longer yeah do you wide, know what I mean widescreen yes yeah, yeah like it's not as like it wasn't ever like full like I would watch my iPad for example right and it wasn't like taking up the whole because obviously you can zoom in or whatever mm-hmm. but it's like I don't know it's like thinner Widescreen, also, that's the aspect ratio. This is getting really technical <laughs> here. Very strange. Some films are thought uh, are shot like four by three ratio. It's all different things. Yeah. But it's probably just because like um, it'll be a different ratio for Disney Plus and it knows, yeah. after 2020, it knows it's going straight on there through yeah, stars. So. I suppose it's not... I don't know if it's necessarily made for TV anymore. It might be only streaming. Whereas it used to come out on TV, I presume. It's like made for Disney Plus. What was the production company that had it before Star produced it? Do you know? No. Because maybe, don't maybe know. if it's like I'll look Warner up. Brothers or something like that. No, you I don't need to look up anyway. I want to look it up though. Okay. You've made me it's going to slow us down. I don't yeah. know. No, you keep talking. Okay, well, there's Criminal Minds, which is what Rachel's been watching. Um, there's a little show out there right now called Succession uh, that myself and Iona were watching. And Iona and Rachel, and I don't know, I'm sure and Keris as well, are what you would call bingers of TV shows. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's just because of like an attention span thing with me or if I just like attention to detail. I don't know. I just, I've always preferred watching a film. I'd rather, you know, to sit there and watch a film rather than loads of mm-hmm. one episodes. Yeah. I like to, you know, start, middle and end. Okay, I've watched it. That's it. Done. I'm not like on episode seven of season 13 or whatever, right? Which I think is more up kind of Rachel Street. Um, but Succession has four seasons, right? Mm-hmm. Not long, 10 episodes per season, right? I just spat on the microphone, the brand new microphone. <laughs> um, so that would normally, t- it would take the average TV watcher, you know, maybe a- if you're watching a season a week, it's going to take you a month to watch this mm-hmm. show. Um, and this show is amazing, right? See the acting in it and the script and the story's great and stuff like that. It's had so much buzz as well, which is something I like. It helps me through TV shows when it's got a bit of buzz. Um, and I've still not finished it. We, we spoke about it five weeks ago on the podcast. I said, oh, I'm on season two or something like that. Uh, I'm, st- I'm now on season three. <laughs> and I'm nowhere near finishing <laughs> yes. it, right? Um, Iona's like dying to watch it. We, we decided we're going to watch the last season together. And it's just I'm just letting the side down massively. And I think what the problem is, um, there's no... Apologies if anybody's like a massive fan of the, sh- the show. But there's no real likeable characters 
Like they're all horrendous people, right? And that's 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 <laughs> kind of the plot, right? It's this terrible kind of wealthy family, right? Um, that's like, like what's the succession going to be in the family? That's kind of the storyline, right? But it's so like dialogue heavy, loads of business words, loads of politics talk. So when you've got the show on, you really need to be watching it, mm, yeah. Yeah. right? It's not the type of show you can just throw on. That's how I used to feel with Peaky Blinders. I know you tried to watch it as well. Yeah. And, like, you just didn't finish it because it's, like, I feel like you can't put that on in the background. Like, mm. if you miss one thing, you're like, what's going on? Who's that? What are they saying? Like, I literally need the subtitles for it. Yeah. I watched everything with subtitles, but half the time I was like, I have no idea what they're talking about or, like, what's coming out their mouths. So that's kind of slowing me down, I think. Yeah. But I do want to watch it. I did promise I would the next time she was on the podcast, which, in theory, should be next week, that I would have finished it and it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So she's so going to shout at me. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm watching just now. And of course, Ahsoka, which has started um, on time of recording. Episode four is out. I'm yet to see the newest episode. And I believe they're showing episode five in some cinemas. Yeah. Hmm. Even though it's only on for 49 minutes. And some of that one. That is random. Yes. Uh, anything else you've been watching? Any films recently? Okay, I just went and saw Elemental today, didn't you? Oh, did you see Elemental? Did, yeah. What did you think? I thought it was okay. It was Coming to Disney Plus on Wednesday. Is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at some point I feel like they've repeated the same message I think the message for mm. kids was very good though mm. it was like everyone yeah. can mix together yep. you know like that was the kind of message it was given and it was very cute a very cute little film quite a pretty film as well yeah like, I thought I thought it was one of the prettiest like they really outdo themselves they really outdo themselves with like it being really pretty and stuff um, on the screen but I do agree that it wasn't like my favourite I've ever seen, but I also no. did really like it. I think it made up for it that it was pretty and stuff. Yeah, it wasn't my favourite Disney film, but yep. I did like the message and it was pretty and it was and it was cute. It was yeah. really cute. Yeah, I thought it was really cute. The wee I, water I really guy was it. so... Oh, there was a, we should also shout out, there's a character in it called Lake who's like Aww. made of water and we have a wee cousin called Lake and so that was like... We were like, oh! Yeah, we have a wee cousin called fun. Lake that we didn't know where that name came from, so then it was nice to see that in kind of like pop culture. Mm -hmm. But we also have learned that way there's a film called The Good Dinosaur, mm -hmm. which I've not seen. And the main character, or the name of the dinosaur? The dinosaur. It's called Arlo, and that is our newest our baby cousin cousin's name. name so. so what's his name in after films? I know, apparently so. And, oh no, never mind. I was going to say Arlo loves dinosaurs, but Arlo doesn't. <laughs> Arlo's like... <laughs> A like baby, baby. Weeks old, I yes. meant Lake likes dinosaurs, but Lake does like old. dinosaurs, so shout out to the wee cousins. <laughs> shout out Lake. Who are clearly watching. listening. Uh, all right, well, I've got a feeling this might take away. I'm not going to try and linger on the questions too much. I've started a new kind of segment on the good bit, which is a quick fire QA, just 60 seconds on the clock. Let's rattle through them all. We're not going to do this in 60 seconds. Um, but uh, I'll try not to take too much time on each question. You guys can chime in as well if you know an answer. Um, and this is a wee preview of what's going to be on the good bits Twitter or the Good Bits X account, coming soon over the next couple of weeks, or the, over the next month, I suppose, <laughs> for the 30-day movie challenge, as Rachel takes a sip in her Spider-Man straw and the cherry Coke that I bought today. And uh, it's a Stormtrooper glass, and a Spider-Man straw is just in the mood for films. You know? Just in the mood for films. I she probably didn't hear anything didn't hear any said that. there. But it was a Stormtrooper glass and a Spider-Man straw, in case you missed that. <laughs> really important part. You have to go and watch the video version for proof. Yes. Right. Hand me, what is day one? What is the first question? Uh, the first question is a movie that reminds you of your childhood. Good one to start off with. Um, <laughs> oh! <laughs> don't don't hit each other. Uh, good one to start off with. I think this, a lot of these questions, I was looking through them earlier on, a lot of these questions, there's not just one answer. There can't just be one answer. Yeah, no. There's not one movie that reminds me of my childhood. It depends what you're talking like. Do you mean childhood going to the cinema? Do you mean childhood watching Disney Channel? Do you and mean like... What age are we talking here? like... Mm. Yeah. This is why I'm not good at things like this. I'm an overthinker. How about like the first film you remember as a child? Okay, that's fair. The first film, I always talk about this, the first film that I went to the cinema to see is Monsters, Inc. Mm -hmm. um, me too. Don't necessarily remember the film itself in the cinema. I mostly remember me and the other kids that were in the screen mm -hmm. running up and down the steps. Right? right. If I was in a film now... Terrorising people. If I was in a <laughs> film now and that happened, I would be furious. <laughs> yeah. I can't even get through a film with someone coughing or sneezing. Well, there was a wee boy um, watching Elemental today and he was like, Mum, I'm going to take my shoes off. Is that all right? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, please take oh, them no. off. <laughs> and shoes. So, think distractions in the cinema. Um, 
I think this is also you could look at this question as like when you see the film is on, do you think of like a particular time that you watched it with like a grandparent or a cousin or something when mm-hmm. you were wee? You know what I mean? Um, when I first saw the question, I thought of the Simpsons movie. Okay. But that would have came out in 2007, so I would have been 10. So mm. we thought, that's still childhood. childhood. That is childhood. You know, yeah. Simpsons movie. I, I was working recently in a school and uh, the, the pastoral care teacher in the school was like, oh yeah, the younger kids, they get a bit wild in this room. So at lunchtime, we put on the Simpsons movie. Aww. <laughs> I thought that Aww. was really Good awesome. way to calm them down. I don't know, like, I mean, the obvious answer would be High School Musical, but then it's like... Is that going to be an answer to another question? Most likely. It most definitely will it be. It most definitely will be. So then I feel like films like um, Ice Age and Shrek and stuff yeah. that they used to play in school, like whenever it was school like last rock. day, like before like Christmas or whatever, and they'd like shove on a film, usually in maths for some unknown reason. It was usually always Ice Age or Madagascar. <laughs> That's what That was like what I remember. What yeah. Madagascar. Did for some reason... reason F- films that I can remember being played in school, right? Madagascar and Ice Age, mm-hmm. School of Rock, Drumline. Do you remember that for I music? That no, idea. no, we watched. What was the one we watched with Mark Ruffalo? Songs and lyrics or something? Music and lyrics. Music and lyrics. Is that but what that's called? not Mark Ruffalo. That's um, Hugh Grant. Is oh. it Hugh Grant? We watched one with Mark Ruffalo. Well, we're going to do a Google search because I've never heard of music Is and Mark lyrics. Mark Ruffalo is that not the one that's thirteen going on thirty? Well, I've, I don't think that's in school, but that he is in that. So it was called Great Music film. Music and Lyrics, two thousand and seven. Oh, Barrymore. We, we, I love this film. We watched this in music. With Cora Cora and the music. Oh, the music. Kenneth, that's good knowledge because it's both Drew Barrymore and Hugh Grant. Yes. Do you know what else reminds me of my childhood? I know we're still in the first question, which is like we need to move on. We should do a whole episode on each question. But <laughs> bend it like Beckham. Oh bend it like God. Beckham. Maybe always we watched on. It in yeah. RMPS. Oh, cool Runnings was, sorry. was always on. Mm. Um, another one that I just remember randomly from sorry. from primary school was Johnny English, right? Okay. And oh. they they swear oh, yeah. once in Johnny English, and he goes bastards, right? Yeah. I and that. I remember I went to the toilet, right, and then that that line happened, and I came back, and all my friends were like, I can't believe you missed it, <laughs> as if it was like a big deal. Like. <laughs> uh, so those ones, oh, well. another one, just you have no idea what this is, but. I, very very early memories a film called ready to rumble and it's a film with david arquette it's about it's about wrestling right so it came out in like the peak of wrestling in the early 2000s i think it was two, actually 2000 or 2001 it came out and i remember watching it like annie linda was up one night and we had it on the tv or whatever i had no idea what the film was uh-huh. years later i'd like search on google for this film i had no idea what it was called i didn't know who was in it uh-huh. and then she just I stumbled across it one day and it was like a total like come to jesus meeting where i was like <laughs> I was like, that's the film I've been looking for since I was like four. Um, ready to rumble. So there you go. Just one last mention, probably Good Burger. Good Burger, Because yeah. like, when else would you watch that? Drake and Josh go you Hollywood. Know? We could be here on night, though. Right, okay, let's, let's, let's go through it. So day two. Uh, movie with the greatest opening scene. Right, so th- I'm glad this one came up because me and an actor, Sean Connor, were talking about this the other week on the podcast because his selected film was Inglorious Bastards mm-hmm. which is a Tarantino yeah. film from World War II not from World War II but it's about World War II <laughs> um, made in 2009 amazing film and we were talking about how we think that might be one of the best opening scenes ever and then I googled what are the best opening scenes and we had there were a couple of options on Google were like The Matrix and I have no memory of the opening scene Raiders of the Lost Ark and then a Jones film that is a great opening scene what about you? I don't know if I'm just answering this by default. You'll know what I mean once I say this. But I would say the two ones that came to my head was Dead Poets. I think because I've seen it so many times. It's Dead Poets Society. Oh yeah, sorry, Dead Poets Society. The, f- the formal name. Yes. But I don't know. I don't know why that. It just always sticks in my head. I think it like, is very like sets the tone of the film. Like you kind of. It's very know. important, yeah. And then also I thought of Tangled. <laughs> I don't really know why I thought of Tangled because I honestly can't really tell you what the opening scene is. I'm sure it's like her and like her mum's brushing her hair. Most likely. Oh, sorry, that was loud. Sorry, any headphone users. <laughs> what about Elf? Oh my god. What's the opening scene in Elf? It like opens with a book and he's yeah, like telling he tells the, story. the story. Do you not think when these questions come up though, you immediately think of your favourite films though? That's what I'm saying. Like default. by default, I'm saying Tangled and Dead yeah. Poets, but I'm like, surely there's something else. And speaking of that, um, Pulp Fiction, can't believe I forgot about Pulp Fiction, open scene is amazing. It's just a simple conversation between two people that ends in like a, a robbery of a cafe that leads to like a climax of the film. It's so good, man. So yeah, a couple of good opening scenes in films. What's number three? 
Your favourite movie f- um, from before 1970? Really hard question. I That's couldn't, a really obscure question. I'm trying to th- I was trying to think of some. Um, like Forget we're Googling again. Old films and stuff like that. Uh, and I was thinking of like the Hitchcock films that I've seen because I have that classified, no, it's not classified, it's called Classic Collection Blu-ray that Rachel got me for my birthday a few years ago. Um, and his original films are from like the 50s and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, there's one called Saboteur, uh, The Man Who Knew Too Much. Um, there's things like this that I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, it's my favourite film from before 1970, but these are just a few that pop into my mind that I've watched and enjoyed. I think things like the original Disney films. Oh, yeah. Like all the original like um, animation films like Cinderella and all that. I'd yep. probably answer that because I probably haven't seen a film before 1970 other than those. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely fair. Like the Jungle Book, the original mm-hmm. Jungle Book, things like that. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. It's a Wonderful Life. You mentioned Elf, Christmas films. There's a good one from 1946, I think. I don't think I've seen that many from before 1970. Like, I'm thinking of, like, not that they're, like, my favourite films or anything, but, like, Jurassic Park and, like, things like that, and they're not before 1970. No. Like, I can't, like, think of... Yeah, I'm trying to think of anything from... What about Psycho? Nah, wasn't that impressed, which is always, like, very bad... I think maybe I'm just a bit desensitised to that though because like I've watched like Bates Motel growing up and stuff so like I don't know whether Psycho yeah. I should have probably seen that first and like had that impression yeah um, I don't know I mean I, I think the only one that came to my head was um, Streetcar Named Desire but I don't uh-huh. know whether I would say like I love that film that's what I mean but like, like I've seen it like <laughs> I don't know is it like none of Star Wars is even 1977 is the first one that's like it's a really hard like yeah. obscure thing like, I'm just trying to search classes so like Alien for example 1979 from the 60s even you know um, yeah. welcome to the 60s I was just thinking about hairspray oh, 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 oh. but obviously that's not thanks for that Kiris yeah uh, alright I, I, I mean it's not that big but let's I'm sorry but on. let's just move on I don't on. know yeah. um, what are we on now day four day four movie with your favourite character oh this is going to be fun it's really Easy to just go with like, you know, I love Marv from Home Alone and stuff like that, right? But I'm trying to think more deep than that, you know, like a favourite a favorite character. And I thought maybe Marty McFly is a good shout, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, probably, yeah, you know what I mean? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so things like, like, big ones like that, probably, I'd probably say. Yeah. Um, but yeah. My I'd default is, of course, any Marvel film that has... Um, Bucky Barnes and that was going to Sebastian Stan yeah. but Bucky Barnes is like my all time favourite and there's nothing wrong with that like if Bucky Barnes is your favourite character then, but then you've, you've got one. any Marvel film and like oh Goblet of Fire with um, Cedric Diggory of course yeah but is he a favourite character though or is it more so you just like because he's so handsome and you like Robert Pattinson or is that like an actual um, Cedric character do you know I think a lot of it stems from that Hufflepuff isn't really in any film but then that's quite yeah, Hufflepuff that's centric because of Cedric um, but I do love the character yeah, that's fair. Um, I'm sure there could be plenty more. Yeah, so many. Mine would so many be great characters. Anything with Loki in it in the Marvel uh, series, and it did start off with because he was kind of good looking and my type, but then it actually like developed. Like he's just, he was just, he was just about to like become <laughs> good, like just, and yeah. then he just. And not to offend Rachel here, but I do, I do think Loki really? probably has more layers than Bucky Barnes does. Because he's got all these different in kind ways, of, yeah. you know what I mean. So yeah, I could probably buy into that. But um, Bucky's a great character. I think it's because what he does, he, what he done wrong, he done it. Like whereas, yeah. like um, Bucky was brainwashed and it wasn't his fault. There so, you like, go. You listen to been, this. He's now just been left to deal with that. Whereas like Loki knew the consequences and knew like what it would become turning good, and then he was ready to do it. And then bye bye, <laughs> bye bye. That sounds good. Right. What's up next? Movies you wish you'd seen on opening night? This is a good one. Um, any of my favourites, you know what I mean? Any of my classics, favourites, I guess the go-to answer, I'm, it's probably Star Wars is probably going to come a lot, but the very first Star Wars film, right? Mm-hmm. Because I just can't imagine people, there's, there had been like sci-fi and like fantasy shows and stuff like that, like Star Trek, the original series was in 1960, mm-hmm. right? 17 years before Star Wars. How crazy is that, right? The TV show. But the TV show didn't end up being particularly popular. That's why it got cancelled after that. It was like 60 episodes. 
And when they saw the success of Star Wars, then they made the, the Star Trek films and they thought, well, we can do yeah. films like this or whatever. So Star Wars kind of changed it. So I can just imagine people who, well, the, the, the average like cinema goer, someone that didn't know about, you know, whatever, like, all these other sci-fi films and stuff like that from before 1977. You just imagine going to see Star Wars. Like it's about this farm boy that like somehow meets this kind of master guy that has special powers, but That's he was back in his boy. prime. <laughs> and then he goes to rest, to the rest, so he goes to fight this guy dressed in all black with a helmet on that speaks with like a mad breather thing. And they have like light up swords. And can you just oh, imagine yeah. seeing that being like, this is not the so norm. Fun. Yeah. So yeah, I'd probably say like the first Star Wars 1977. That'd be a good one. Mine would be Endgame and Marvel and Marvel will come up a lot and it's fully because I didn't watch any Marvel films until 2022 20, yeah right. 2022 yeah, 21 or 22, no it was 22 and I've now like I've now seen all of them I've, mm. I'm behind on a few TV shows but <laughs> I, aren't we all literally no I <laughs> cannot imagine watching that in the cinema that would have been the best experience of my life and I wish I was there I wish I like well, tuned into Marvel before yep You'll be there for Secret Wars though, which is like the equivalent of Infinity War and Endgame. We're going to have the whole, like, everybody's in it. And mm. it's like a pure, like, two, not two parter, but it's like one of those, you know, how like Infinity War and Endgame kind of link. Yeah. It's like a whole, like, build yeah. up thing. So at least we'll get to experience that, but that's a long time away. Long time away. In a galaxy far, far away. Um, I probably was also going to say Endgame because we didn't go opening night. Yeah, but, but we didn't close enough. Also, I don't know if I would have found that a bit weird. I don't really want the cinema noisy. I want the cinema quiet. You want it to yourself. Like, Dad's very determined that, like, he was like, I wish we'd went to this because we would have seen all the reactions. But, like, we went maybe, like, I think it maybe came out on, like, the Wednesday and we went the Friday, something like that, right? It was probably even just the day after. It was something like that because it was our last day of school. So we were definitely in school. I think it was maybe, like, a Thursday or something. And um, we went and saw it and, like, it was still noisy. Like, the people were still yeah. cheering and crying and gasping and all Clapping. of that stuff. So, I don't know, to be honest, what I would... Maybe the first Harry Potter film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, I'm I saying that n- as like I saw the next question. And okay. it also is going to be Harry Potter. Right, really. Go for it then, let's move on. Um, but I think the first Harry Potter would be... Especially if you'd grown up reading the books. Like, if you'd waited for the books to come out. Yeah. And then... Because the books weren't done, like, when the first film came right. out. So, it would have been quite... Fun to like well, see how they adapt read it. the books, you know what I mean? You I know, know. Like you've seen it, and th- I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, but, but the day six question was a movie you've seen more than any other, and I think Harry Potter probably is up there. Probably First Avenger, uh, Captain America, and Perks have been a wildflower and Deadpool. It's like they're the ones that I would re watch yeah. constantly. It's I think probably they're them. all probably good Rachel answers. I think the easy answers are like the Christmas films. Well, yeah. Yeah, but I was going to say Elf. Yeah. Slightly cheating, you know what I mean? But, like, we have seen them probably more than anything yeah. else. Uh, I'd probably say Jaws is probably the one I've seen the most. Oh, gosh. Probably I've Jaws. I've recently just seen Barbie three times in the <laughs> cinema as well, so probably yeah. that. <laughs> that is fair. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Oh, yeah. Um, day seven, a movie you can quote every line. Probably <laughs> going back to the <laughs> films you were just talking about. Uh, I don't think there's one single film I can quote every line. The closest I think I can do is probably Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good one. I think genuinely the, like, four I just said. Yeah. Like, Fine. pretty much. The Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the Grinch. <laughs> Listen, man, like, see Elf and stuff like that. You actually I actually can elf. quote every line. You know, those yeah. Christmas films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, mm. <laughs> that's it. I'm not going. <laughs> I thought she was about to break into song there. <laughs> she is. No. Almost, right. right, keep going. On uh, a roll here. Day eight, movie with the greatest acting performance. Oh. Nah, I mean, this is so subjective, man. It's like, how do you pick one um, of the history of cinema and all the films you've seen, uh-huh. you know? Um, recent films that immediately came to mind, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with... Mar- um, well, well Margot's great in it but I was thinking of um, Leo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt together they're mm-hmm. amazing together um, especially Brad Pitt I think it's one of his most underrated things um, so I would probably go with that straight off the top of my head it's definitely not the. Um, let me just put this on record it's not I don't think that is the greatest acting performance ever can I just make that clear <laughs> um, it's just one that I thought was really good the go to answer everybody says is Heath Ledger's Joker. Mm-hmm. Um, fair. And I think that's probably fair. And there's, there's so many classic performances. I'll give you an obscure one here. Yeah. Because like, you could say, like, 
oh my god like Robert Downey Jr. and Endgame like yeah, you could yeah, say yeah, yeah. stuff like that mm-hmm. but the thing that came to my head was Sebastian Stan and I, Tonya. Okay. Because I don't think he got appreciation for it when he should have because that was Margot Robbie and she got nominated for like, I think it was, I think it was Oscars. If it wasn't Oscars, it was like one of like, ba- I'm not BAFTA, that's TV. Yeah. What's the other one? Emmys? Yeah, it's TV. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. She got nominated for a bunch of stuff. I'm sure it was Oscars and like he didn't get the appreciation for it but i think that's his probably his best acting performance because i think see when you know like an actor like quite right. well like so i know his like actual like you know interviews and like him and i know him everyday <laughs> life as well as like in like everything he's ever seen uh, everything he's ever been in not everything he's ever seen um i think when you know it's so different than like his personality like it's so far yeah. from sebastian stan and it's so so like intense like it was they had to like stop filming scenes and like he he would like kept apologizing to like margot robbie and all that they filmed it in a tent it's so intense it's intense <laughs> not in a tent um it's one of my favorite jokes probably for me the most recent one i can think of is florence Pugh and don't worry darling <laughs> Good show, yeah. i think she was amazing in that and i do think it's so overshadowed by the fact that it's harry styles and the all the drama yeah and the drama from it and this and that I don't think he was bad in it. I know a lot of people have a lot of things to say about him as an actor and that's fine, whatever. But she was phenomenal. She honestly, masterpiece. Have you seen Midsummer? No, but I want to. I think she's better than that. Really? I, I think, I think still, she's such a good actress. To this day, I think she's maybe the best actress right now. Mm-hmm, um, for sure. And I, I think her best performance I've seen is, is uh, Midsummer. I just googled greatest acting performances just because obviously missing classic ones here. Mm-hmm. Number one is Marlon Brando in The Godfather. So I mean, it's fair. It's fair enough. Like, that goes back to what I was saying is like I don't really know anything about Marlon Brando right, other okay. than I've seen him in Streetcar Named Desire and The Godfather. So like, yeah. sure, but like Absolutely. it doesn't like. I don't go, oh, he was good in this, but not very good in this. Like, okay. Number two, Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man, Al Pacino in Godfather Part 2. Then there's loads of other classic ones here. Heath Ledger's Dark Knight is number nine. And then Meryl Streep in Sophie's Choice, which I've actually never seen. Um, there's a shout out to Daniel Day-Lewis in There Will Be Blood. He's good in that. And then we have Jack Nicholson in The Shining, mm-hmm. right? Now, that's absolutely fair. That's a great performance. However, a bit like Heath Ledger, he went absolutely mental and like totally far. became the, like and he's, he's scaring the cast members and you know what yeah. I mean I'm like yeah. it, what are you doing I, do, I don't need that it's not really the same thing but Evan Peters used to do that in American Horror Story like or, or Jeffrey Dahmer I'm pretty sure he took Evan time Peters, like it was pretty good out of American Horror Story because it was like he was getting too into like the method acting of it like yeah. Robert Pattinson does that as well but he's never done anything quite that well <laughs> I mean I've not seen everything he's been in but Robert Pattinson's slightly unhinged as he goes anyway um, but yeah, like he is quite a like method actor. Like he would just talk in the accent for like days and stuff like that, and like yeah. all that kind of thing. So loads of good shoots on this list here, by the way. Christian Bale in American Psycho, Johnny Depp and Edward Scissorhands. I wasn't that impressed with American Psycho. Like it I'm was good. Years, man. It was good. I just watched it last, like kind of like Halloween time. I think it was good, but I was like, it's maybe because I watched so much like true crime stuff and like American Horror Story and Bates Motel and all that. But I was yeah. like. Okay, like and <laughs> yeah, like sure, okay, but yeah. Anyway, again, another another question we could dwell on for ages. What question are we on? Ten, that one. No, no. Oh no, nine. Day nine is your favorite British movie. Yeah, this is pretty hard too because I was thinking about this earlier on. I mean, obviously, if it's made by the BBC, then it's a bit a British <laughs> film. But it's like, do you like if, if there's British actors in it? You know, and it's set in London. Is that a British film? Yeah. Or yeah. is it just because it's got a British director? I would class it as if it's set in somewhere in Britain. Okay, even though if it was made in Hollywood, even though... Yeah, that's if fair. it's set in Britain, that's British um, film. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm honest. I think the first thing came to mind was something like Shaun of the Dead or... Um, yeah, there's, 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 I mean, sure, there's loads out there, but none. I just I prefer American movies. Can I give you two obscure yeah. answers again? I mean, one's not that obscure. After Sun is a good show. After good, yeah. Um, with Paul Mescal. Um, wasn't like, I don't think I was obsessed with it as a lot of people were, mm-hmm. but I do think he was very, very good in that. So maybe that we could go with acting performance as well. Paul Mescal absolutely made that film. Yeah, he's 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 going to, I think, end up being Big in star. a lot of stuff and yeah, like yeah. get the recognition he deserves because he really does. 
but the other thing that came to my head was a film called Benjamin, right? Mm -hmm. As in, because this is just favourite, it's not about acting for me, it's about favourite British film. So a film called Benjamin with Colin Morgan in it. And it was, it was one of these films that I was like always kind of new of because I do that thing like, so I watched everything Smash and Stam was in, I was going to do it with Robert Pattinson and then like Colin Morgan, I was like, oh, I could do it for him because he doesn't have as many. So I was like, that'd be easier. Mm -hmm. um, and I like always kind of knew of it in the back of my head and I put off watching it and I watched it and I was like, why <laughs> did I not watch this sooner? Like, it was so good. It's okay. so good. Okay. I good loved show. it. And that's very British. So. Um, sorry, go on. I was going to say Bridget Jones's Diary. Yeah. All them. Great answer. And then like old like Hugh Grant films. Like I was Notting actually Hill thinking and Notting like Hill, that. Four Winds and a Funeral. Love actually. What about, that's, no, that's them. Pretty right, Women. That's so sad. It's because she's uh, British, I thought of it. I guess Love Actually... Yeah, Pretty Women, I've not seen Pretty Women, but um, Never. Love Actually is set both in Britain and the States, isn't it? Like, yeah, But I guess yeah. it is a British film, Love Actually. I think Love Actually is a very British film. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think just with like the kind of humour in it, I think it's British, like kind of tailored. And I know we're Scottish and none of us mentioned Trainspotting, but there you go. I haven't seen Trainspotting. I haven't seen it either. I managed I, I to do. avoid it in drama. Yeah. Trainspotting is a good film, but it's not really particularly... I feel like we shouldn't be saying that on a podcast. I've not seen Trainspotting. <laughs> I've not seen Pretty Women. I've not seen that, like... Sorry. It's a movie podcast. Sorry about that. Uh, and any, any of the Monty mm. Python films, I've not actually seen all of them, so I can't even judge them all. But let's go for the next one. Oh, no, that one. Day 10, the movie that scared you the most? Films have scared me because they've been so bad. <laughs> and I've been, why Why am I watching this? Uh, but genuinely, I, I don't... I've not really been that freaked. I don't like horror films a lot because I don't I don't no. I don't stick to them because I don't like being scared. I think why would you put yourself through that? I understand it's like the tense and the thrill and all that stuff. But I will say I was pretty freaked by the shining. I was pretty freaked by the shining. I think I'm gonna try watch that this year, so I'll get back to you on that. But one. I just feel like now though you're gonna watch and you're gonna be like, Chris, it wasn't scary at all. No, it's not that. It's like I've always wanted to watch it and I do think it will be creepy. I'm not good with jump scares. It's not really jump scary, it's you know? like it's like the, the, the haunted hotel when like the empty corridor. I know all about that. the Stanley Hotel you know what in I mean? Colorado that, actually. That's the kind of scary part. Um I keep thinking of really random and bizarre answers. Like, like some of these things that are gonna come out of my mouth, these are like what? Do you know what film really, really scared me? I actually have two answers. One, right, this is not known as a good film at all. When I was younger, I used to be so scared of Jaws 4, <laughs> which is like the worst Jaws film apparently. But when I was little... Jaws the Revenge. It scared me so much. And do you know why? I think it was the trauma from Florida. Quick mm. synopsis, we went on the Jaws ride in Florida. I was about seven or something. And then I, we, the next day we swam with dolphins. I sat on the side where the shark jumped out <laughs> and it like went on fire and all that and it was in a dark tunnel and it, I've been traumatised ever since. So maybe that had something to do with that. But the one that was obscure was, um, what was it called? Crawl? The one with the oh, alligator? Crawl, yeah, yeah. I did not like that. really scared me. Like, the Meg didn't scare me. I was like, that's just stupid. It's too big. It's mental. Like, it's pure dramatic. Backtrack a little bit here. Why just Jaws 4? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Jaws 4 but scared did me. It come out? When did it come out? Oh, 1980 something. All right, never mind then. Because I was going to say maybe I had just watched it and we won't went on this ride or something. Jaws four, it scares me because it's almost like it's like it's so. <sighs> Jaws is my favourite movie, and even still to this day, it happened to me last night when I see a picture of one of the scenes of Jaws on Google. I still get a bit scared, not mm -hmm. because it's like oh no, it's Jaws. Just the whole situation is terrifying, right? Um, Jaws four bothers me because they've not made any effort. To make it seem as if it's actually in an open bed of water that they're filming in. It's mm -hmm. clearly in a wee pool that they've you know rented for the film. Because the pool water is a different colour than the sea. Yeah. They made I'm no sure, effort yeah. to... So that bothered me. It gets me angry. But also Michael Caine's in it, so I like it a lot. I don't watch scary films. The only scary yeah. film I've ever watched, or scary horror, was called Hush. And it came out in 2016. Hush was a good film. It was a good film, actually. I remember I was watching it at a friend's house and... I was like, I don't watch horror films. And she was like, just watch oh, it. Oh, I thought Hush was really good. And it was weird because no one speaks in it because she's she's, she's deaf, deaf, right? And like some guys like try to like kill her. And oh, it's like... similar to like Bird Box? I've not seen I've Bird not Box. I've not seen it, but that's the same idea, is it not? Or is she blindfolded? But she's blindfolded, Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But it's like the... It's a wee bit the different. Lack of hearing version of Don't Breathe. Yeah. Don't breathe. Yeah. And it was just... It was just more like creepy it wasn't really jump scary because yeah, you could see everything that's going on but you more just what you were like shouting at her. you were like 
he's by like he's he's right there yeah, like yeah. turn around like you can like you can see him and she can't and hear him she and not it's like so weird sitting typing on her f- on her laptop ever and uh-huh. it's like he pops up in like the patio doors behind him or whatever yeah, like, like a pretty, mask on he's like try to kill her and it's oh it's, it's, pretty it's, scary. it's terrifying yeah. yeah get out was a pretty scary film and so was us actually those jordan peele films i never wanted to watch them because i thought i was going to be absolutely terrified of them right and i still don't know if i could watch us from jo- us all, all i've scary. seen is the trailer i've seen get out now we watched it not too long ago it like was scary, but like a and type a di- of scary film I could handle. It was yeah, like a, yeah, thriller yeah. a thriller rather than a horror. Like it freaked me out, but I think me being able to watch like true crime and stuff, like I, that's the kind of base that I can handle. Yeah. Whereas like us, just the bit. Do you know what bit is terrifying and get out? When the th- guy starts running at the her gardener. on the like, pit, uh, it's a gardener, and he just bolts at her and runs no, past him, her. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that oh. bit is so scary. It's 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 more the idea of get out. Like there's a bit where like the whole th- it's a spoilers for get out, but it's like the whole event that they're having is put on just to kind of get Daniel Kaluuya's character. So the two like jo- uh, Daniel Kaluuya and his partner Rose go upstairs, and then like the whole conversation downstairs stops, and they all stop and they all turn and look. Oh yeah. And it's just wee things like that. It's like not even a horror, but it's just it's actually quite a scary moment. Mm-hmm. Right, anyway, we need to move on. We're going to have a long, many answers for this next question. Okay. So let's try. Do you, you were, you hmm. read this one. Me? Okay, Day 11 is the movie with the best soundtrack. Oh yeah, man. We're going to have to try and... Are you talking, are we talking joining. like score? Like uh, the music written? Give us both. Or you went, so score, Star Wars is my favourite. Um, and Back to the Future and Jaws. Marvel. Are one of my three favorite scores. Marvel's obviously good, but there's just so many in Marvel. It's like Guardians of the think? Galaxy. But then, ga- but, but that's different because that's like songs they've bought. Right, okay, you bought, see, okay. I mean, like you mean like the like okay, the tune, like, like they've written the Star Wars music. I don't really like Harry look Potter. in Harry Potter. Harry Potter of course. Park. I don't really look into soundtracks too much until we went to that Harry Potter like yeah. orchestra thing when it made you sit and listen to it, and it was so good. Good show. Thank you, Iona. Um, <laughs> but I don't really. Otherwise, for me, it would be like The Great Showman. Like yeah. Lemonade Mouth, yeah. Lemonade, Lemonade Mouth, Mouth. yeah. All the Disney ones, like Camp Rock, I yeah, musical yeah, yeah. stuff like that would be. That's what gets me. Or mu- musicals like Hairspray or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was thinking Mamma Mia, like both of them, like one and two. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I was going to say I was going to say Great Showman. That was what I was thinking about as well. Baby Driver. Yeah. Mhm. What? Hang on, I have a playlist just quickly called Songs Sung, and it's like songs from films and uh, like TV shows that have been in them. So, oh, great, uh, great one actually is Tick, Tick, Boom. Oh, yeah. Great soundtrack. And also, wait, no one's mentioned Barbie. And I'm bad like a Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other one that came in my head there? Oh, um, Tangled and Encanto. Well, these are like D- Disney films that have like a Moana and stuff that have like original songs. Kind of like, no, the not musicals, King. but they are. Hello. Yeah, okay. But yeah, tick tick boom. I was like, yeah. well, so seeing Elemental today, way. an artist that I like called, I think Lav. It's like L A U V. He wrote a song for that. That was in that. That was good. I remember being like, oh, in the cinema, could we like know Lav? Like, yeah, not personally. You love Lav, but we shout out Ari. That's his name, his real name. Also, shout out to the Home Alone music too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Day twelve, the movie that changed you the most. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. First thing comes to your head. High School Musical. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you why. Um, it was the first time that I thought... Um, oh, not that I did the first time. I just always liked performing. And I felt as if I couldn't. Um, I liked playing sports. And I liked wrestling. And I liked basketball and stuff like that. Aww. And then, you know... It's, but it's, it's like, that's the message. That's the whole point of the film, isn't it? Yeah. Troy that's, does it. That's so nice, yeah. It makes all the young boys do it. And it totally was reason yeah, i became do you not feel like drama and stuff wasn't like wasn't cool, cool for yeah, boys yeah, especially yeah. like tr- the fact of like zach Efron being like an attractive young like cool guy, guy. that like everyone like loved mm-hmm. yeah. but like he was cool enough to do it like yeah. i think that was it's just, i'm telling you that film will never get the recognition that it deserves because of the the it's what because it, it's disney and it's cheesy and it's all the time and all that stuff and it's the songs and that but i'm telling you man it, it done a lot of stuff for a lot of people yeah I don't know what movie. Ch- I mean, Barbie. <laughs> That's fair. That's like a full answer. stop. That's a fair answer. I think. I think the number one would be Dead Poet Society because 
like Perks Been Awful has always been my favourite film and like it still always will be but Deadpool Society was the first one that I watched after that that I was like oh my god like a film can actually like take over my life more than Perks Been Awful like, you just like can't stop thinking about it and, like, like it yeah. literally like I couldn't believe how much I loved this film and how much it was like made for me like it was like my film like I was just I didn't expect it to be so like impactful yeah you know so moving so maybe that one okay Okay, um, the fact this has landed on me is actually kind of beautiful. Day 13 is the best book to movie adaption. Uh, I can't really speak to this as much. I don't know as many. Philosopher's Stone's pretty good. Hey, you've, seen, <laughs> you've read all of Harry Potter and I haven't. Um, yeah, tell us what do you think as the reader in the room. I'm trying know, not to. She has now. Keris has just read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is getting adapted oh, yes. to. Big, uh, book this year. It's getting adapted, so you'll get to experience that with me because I've not even oh. read it yet. Um, Jaws again. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think. I'm just going to keep it quick because there's too many and I yeah. will be here all night if I try and overthink this. But genuinely, uh, The Perks Been All Flower is one of the most accurate because you've got to think about Perks Been All Flower is written solely in letters, it's not written in right. like prose. It's every single, it's not even really chapters, it just starts like, dear reader, every single thing. Yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. Um, And the fact that it's so true to the book is like, in that sense, like you could have kind of ran with that and done anything, but they didn't. So probably that, I would say, but that's also slightly biased because it's my favourite film, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Where are we at? at? The 14. A movie you love that everyone hates. Uh, I've got a brilliant answer. Again, it's like it's subjective because not I can't I don't think everybody hates one film. There's always someone that likes it or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so hard to decide. I'll just go with ones that I like that not as many people like. Mm-hmm. Captain Marvel is one for me. Okay. I proper love the film and it's just it was released at the wrong time. People didn't want to see it. They didn't want another superhero. I agree. Yeah. They just wanted Endgame and they got Brie Larson instead. But it's I such a good film. I would say that's probably the same with Black Widow. Mm-hmm. I know so many people that have told me they've never watched that even though they've watched all of Marvel. Yeah. And I think because it came out after yeah. everything happened. So like yeah. no one watched so it. People see like that. what's the point or whatever. But it's actually yeah, such but a good film. It was such a good film. Yeah. Um, I also love The Last Jedi. Um, yeah. It was Star Wars Episode 8. And it's uh, people are finally coming around now, and people are stop kidding on and being like, "Oh, I don't like new Star Wars," and like actually being like, it's "This is so actually annoying. artistically brilliant and stuff uh-huh. like that." You know what I mean? People are finally coming around, but at the time, it was actually Star Wars fans, wrestling fans, and Rangers fans. Honestly, <laughs> the worst and best <laughs> fan bases. You know what I mean? And I just be, I'm a proud member of all three. But uh, I st- just when that film came out, you know what I mean? It was like. I, I was just absolutely buzzed that we had new Star Wars. You know what I mean? I didn't I think about it, it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then you look back at it, and I'm sitting watching it going, I can't believe anybody didn't like this. Yeah. Or anybody, know. You know, it's just, it blows my mind, but people have got arguments. I feel kind of similar about Rise of Skywalker. I was about um, to say Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. I don't think it's as bad as people think. I mean, when I first saw it in the cinema, I literally remember, sorry, spoilers, if you haven't seen Rise of Skywalker, um, like when... You know how the whole thing of like Kylo and Ray and they're like saving each other and then like she's like holding them or whatever and then I was like don't kiss don't kiss don't kiss don't kiss because I was like this is so there's no need like don't do it like you're giving him a redemption then no li- right but I was like don't like you've given him a redemption you don't need to make this a romance but then I watched it again like quite recently I rewatched Star Wars and I was like wait why did I kind of love them yeah. like I know that was a bit unhinged but I did. I think um, people didn't like that because, again, it probably was unnecessary, right? I just, I think Star Wars has always been about, um, like, the kind of relationship between people, but not in, like, a romantic way. Yeah, like, lo- it's like a found family show. It's so wholesome. Film, I mean. You know, they're brother and sister and they're helping each other well, out and stuff like that. Other than that one moment. We um, don't talk about that. But yeah, so, like, I don't know. I would. I think a wee, I always said this at the time, a wee head touch, head together wee moment. Wee Would have been so That's cute, a Marvel thing. You know, but they kissed instead. But the build up but to the whole film. That's what I think I didn't appreciate the first time. I was like, why are they doing this? There was no need. See, when I rewatched it, I was like, oh my God. I was like waiting for it. I was like, oh. Yeah. But I have another really good one for a film that everybody hates that I love. Just quickly. Uh, Mortal Instruments, City of Bones with Jamie Campbell Bower. 
and what's I've her never name? seen it. What's her name? Lily Collins. Lily Collins. That's it. Oh my god! Everybody hates this film like so much so that it got like cancelled. Like the films, as in like they never made any more. <laughs> and then they years later tried to make a show called Shadowhunters to like make up for it. And like I'm refusing to watch it because Jace Wayland is Jamie Campbell Bower in my head. And then I think also in the same vein as Percy Jackson films that got absolutely okay. trashed. But do I remember them? Not that well. But I remember loving them, and I love Logan Lerman, so I'll take okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, hang on, the phone's went off. Um, Day 15's the funniest movie you've ever saw. Again, pretty hard, but I always say my favourite comedy is Airplane from yeah. 1980. It's my type of comedy. I'd say Elf and Home Alone. Yeah. And do you know what? The Johnny English one we saw in the cinema, don't know if I'd still find that the funniest film I've ever watched, but I remember there was one scene in it that I was like sobbing because I was laughing yeah. so much in the middle of the cinema. So, I mean, there you go. The Naked Gun too, also good one, mm-hmm. but it comes from the same people as Airplane. I was going to say Elf or like um, Grown Ups. Yeah. Yeah. Another I, film that I quite liked that everybody hates. I used to say that was my favourite film. See, before I like... When I was like younger and yeah. I didn't really have a favourite film that wasn't like Harry Potter or The Hunger Games. Like if it was like another answer, it was grown ups. Mm-hmm. Underrated, I think. This one? Yeah. So sixteen is your favourite shot from a movie? It's so hard. Um but I'm gonna I just I feel like we're talking about Star Wars so much, but um a lot of the shots in The Force Awakens I really like because I saw it at the cinema and it was the first Star Wars film that I could remember seeing at the cinema. I saw Revenge of the Sith in 2005, but I was mm-hmm. so young. Um, and I can't. I, I try to explain this to people about like my love for The Force Awakens and I don't think it's the best Star Wars film and it's all this stuff, right? But you have to understand where I was in life at this time. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just started drama college, right? Four months previously, right? And I was mm-hmm. just someone who loved Star Wars and stuff growing up in that. But uh, around this time, between 2015 and I'd say probably 2017, 2018, I was like so into films much more than I am now and I was watching stuff almost every night and stuff like that and I was learning about it and I was getting quite kind of like, I don't know, I don't know, trying to be all posh and be like, oh, I really like the acting performance here and the lighting was <laughs> beautiful here and all that stuff. But having that kind of mindset going into a Star Wars film that actually had great acting and good yeah. special effects and good stuff, it totally, I was like, oh my God, Star Wars with great acting, you know? I was yeah. like, oh, who is this Adam Driver man? Um, <laughs> you know what I mean things like that so just where I was in life I was just like that was I, me when I saw the film too <laughs> right. so I'd probably say like when we first uh, Oscar Isaac because he's my man when we first meet Ray and she's like sca- scavenging for stuff and she's like sliding down the desert and she's like all these kind of long shots of her and the sun and all that like yeah. I was like artistically this is great and yeah. you know what I mean because I was at that period in my life whereas if I saw it now I'd probably just be like that's so cool but yeah. I was trying to be artistic at the time Again, to bring up Marvel for me, it's probably the shot, and I'm gonna say it's, I want to say it's Endgame with all the women. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Endgame. Yeah. Yeah, that's Endgame. Yeah. Yes. And they all come through at the end. Sadly, Natasha Romanoff is not there. So that's Endgame. Yeah, she's not there, and all the women are there, and it's like the big shot of them all coming in, and then same with the shot of um Sam coming in to Captain America on your left. Um, I'm so proud that she's like mentioned yeah. Marvel films as like her favorite answers. But those both of answers that we've given are both like CGI filmed. We don't have any real like well, filmed shots. I'm not going to help matters here. <laughs> I told Chris this at the dinner table the other night. I don't even know if you remember me saying this, but um, I th- genuinely think the scene in Tangled where oh, yeah, good see when they're in like the streets and they have like they dance at the castle and it's just like the music playing and she's like dancing like in the street party and he's like standing watching her and it goes from that scene into the lantern scene and i just think that is like the greatest like to like it makes me want to sob every time i like watch it because i just think it's the prettiest like I don't know. It's actual. I don't know why it's so good. It just is. And it's like to me, it's like the ultimate, like most Disney shot mm-hmm. moment. You know. Anyway, right. We'll, we'll move on. Oh, no, sorry. Well, what? What? When are we on? Uh, Day seventeen's the movie. No, the, yeah, the movie with the greatest villain. Movie the greatest villain. Uh, so many to pick from. I'll go back to Inglorious Bastards with Christoph Waltz, just because it's like kind of in my head just now, and it's fresh off my screen. Uh, he's probably one of my favourite villains uh, I've ever seen in cinema, but obviously Darth Vader's a good one to go to. Um, but he's not really the villain. He's just a he's just a young boy. I feel like 
I was going to say, like, Batman with... Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the Batman villains, right? But, like, I'm, I, know I'm, I know this is so controversial and so bad, but I don't really think that older Batmans, like, hold up for villains-wise. I think, like, as films, whatever, you can think we want. But I don't think, like, the Penguin from, like, the older... I don't really... I never got behind that. But Jack I'd the new, the new Riddler. Isn't he? he was still the Riddler, wasn't he? Who Paul was? Dano. Paul Dano, yeah. He was the Riddler, wasn't yeah, it? but he only popped up... No, was he, in the whole film? he was in the whole film. The oh, Joker was what didn't pop up. What oh, do you yeah, mean you I don't remember right. it? But the whole film is about him. I know. I don't anyway, him. But I was actually going to say Killian Murphy doing Scare Scarecrow. Yeah, is that the right thing? I think it's an underrated version, like because I think yeah. it gets overshadowed by like Heath Ledger's yeah. Joker's in that one. That's fair. But I think Killian Murphy's Scarecrow is he's really quite creepy. He's pretty creepy. So yeah. I would say that. Good Sorry answers. for the Marvel answer again, right? But the best Marvel villain I think truly is the High Ever. Ev evolutionary from what film guardians of the galaxy 3 okay or volume 3 he's the only i feel like true villain he has absolutely like there's no backstory as to like why he was hurt and his family and this and that like there's nothing he's just pure evil yeah and that's yeah. it and it's the best that. guardians film as well i think it is i truly believe that too mm. Okay, day eighteen. Your favorite foreign language movie? Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's one that's been on my shelf for the longest time. It's called Portrait of a Lady on Fire. It's French, hmm. and I've been recommended it for maybe two years. And I've not watched it yet, so yeah. I've just got a feeling I'll probably love that one. Uh, I don't necessarily have a favorite one. I really like. There's a film called You Jimbo that we did on the podcast a few months ago. That was really good. Um, and also Seven Samurai is a good one as well. Oh, hmm. Jackie Chan films. I was going to forgot about Jackie Chan <laughs> films. Forgetting these. Um, <laughs> Drunken Master is a good one for Jackie Chan films, and uh, Armor of God or Police Story. I don't know. There's plenty of good ones. I don't. The only I've seen like three French films. Mm -hmm. I think. I don't know if I would say they're like a favorite. But there's one called uh, Nuisa Mare. There's Le Professor, I think, was the other one. And we might be making up the name of that, by the way, because I actually don't know what it was called. <laughs> but it was about a teacher, and I have a feeling it was like called The Teacher, which is Le Professor, so there we go. And the other one, I can't remember exactly what it was called. I think it was uh, Nuia Brewer, which is Night and Fog. And that was actually quite a good film. Like, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I watched this for class. I'm going yeah. to be so bored. And I was actually like, oh my god, why am I investing this? I actually loved this? it. Yeah. So maybe that, but like, is that... I don't know, because I do remember anything about them, not really. But if we're going to have to give an answer, then probably that. Um, day 19, though, which you've talked about a lot. I, you already know I don't remember the answer to this question, but the first movie you saw at the cinema. Yeah, it's reminds you earlier on. Monsters, Inc. was mine. I have no idea, but uh, this wasn't the first film I saw at the cinema, but like a memorable thing for me is like seeing... The Avengers, we, we like to call Avengers Assemble, so we don't get confused. Um, I remember seeing that in the cinema, and I remember like pure like finding it really funny and like loving it. And that's the first time I've ever seen a Marvel film, mm -hmm. so that stands out because I don't remember the first film I saw in the cinema, but I know I saw that, so that's a good shout. That's fair. It's just a random memory came. My, sorry, kids, but a random memory that came in my head was we went me and my mate Jamie, I think, uh, that I was pals with when I was really young. We went to see. Garfield or Garfield 2 but for some reason his mum took us don't get me started about Garfield for some reason his mum took us at like 10 in the morning what the heck like took us so early it's right? too early for Garfield we were like, <laughs> we were like the <laughs> only ones in the cinema and like she fell asleep in the cinema <laughs> it's maybe why I don't like lasagna <laughs> it might be I love Garfield so much I do oh my god don't get me started with Garfield <laughs> <laughs> my answer for that is I'm pretty sure I was told it was Elf but I don't remember why did you see Elf in the cinema how much fun it must have been Aww. fun but I was too young and then I think um, the other answer was the same as Chris Monsters Inc good show. so day 20 is a great movie you'll never watch again <laughs> I don't Garfield. know <laughs> I don't I'm know joking. man nah I'd probably like a sad film that I thought was really oh. good that I probably won't watch again Five Feet Apart don't know. That was a really sad film. Yeah. Cole Sprouse. Sprouse, yeah. Broke me. Same with like um oh what was the other one? Bridge to Tedrisky. 
<laughs> brush your teeth yeah. after that the cinema when I was really young Here, can I just say right you know how that's like everybody's like slightly traumatised from Bridge to Terabithia I've never watched it I can't bring myself to watch it they sh- were playing that in the staff room in work <laughs> the other day and it was like <laughs> quarter to 11 in the morning and I was like why the heck is Bridge to Terabithia <laughs> on the screen <laughs> I literally like, tr- I was like gobsmacked <laughs> um, for this answer I actually don't really know but one that popped into my head there which I don't know if I Okay, I'm going to keep my opinions to myself on this. But I was thinking about Asteroid City. Okay. Because I'm not saying that, like, I'll never watch it again. But, like, I'm not... You're I remember no coming out of it being like, I didn't dislike it. I'm not going to watch it ever again. Whereas, like, I would say films by Wes Anderson. But I would happily watch, like, Grand Budapest again. Yeah. And, like, Moonrise Kingdom again, because I don't remember Moonrise well, Kingdom. Well, Grand Budapest is just more of a... It's just a good time yeah. when you watch it. Former co-host of the Good Bit podcast, Aaron Dockard, believes he may be done with Wes Anderson. He thinks he's doing the oh, same thing too whoa. much. He's so asteroid say and it just did nothing for him. Fair enough. Okay, good answer. Do you know one movie I felt like that with and I actually went with you guys? Chris might not have been there actually. It was um, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. A great film, don't get me wrong, but it was long. Yeah. And I don't think I would like if I was rewatching the Marvel films. It's not one that I would like immediately go back and rewatch. Yeah, I'd probably agree. I, I'd probably more likely to rewatch the first Avatar than I would the second oh. Avatar because it's so long. Yeah, but it's yeah, so same. Well made. First Avatar was good. You know, a uh, kind of um, a controversial one for me was The Shape of Water. I, I was thinking about that film like five minutes ago because right. I thought that's going to pop up on this. So I don't really like the film. Right, but it won Oscars mm-hmm. and stuff like that. People love it. It's got a really good message and stuff. It's really well made. The CGI is pretty good. It just wasn't for me. I didn't like it. Didn't click with it. Didn't think it was very good. Didn't like the story. Fair enough. But so I'm like, I watched it. I was like, I'm never going to watch that again. But I think it won like Best Picture, and I was like, Aye. that's an absolute farce. But anyway. Oh God. Oh. Uh, Day Twenty One is a movie that makes you cry. Jesus. Oh my God, where do we start? Uh, I'm not a crier, guys. I am. I know you are. Me and Ken. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Guardians of the Galaxy three. I know any Marvel film. Probably. Can we not like we we'll make a real no more Marvel or Star Wars answers? Okay, sorry. Um, five on, five feet apart. The Notebook. P.S. I love you. <laughs> no. Um. Oh, do you know? What? Titanic, but I don't cry that anymore because I've seen it so many times. I didn't cry Titanic. I thought it was sad, but I knew it was going to happen. Oh my god. Um. Oh, there's just so many. Um, I cried at Barbie. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I'm trying not to repeat myself, but honestly, probably Dead Poets Society and Fair's Been a Wallflower. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what else, to be honest. I mean, you can cry, there's different ways, isn't there? There's like crying because you're so emotional of like how great it is and it's all oh. coming together like Endgame or like Star Wars thing, but like, or, or cry because you're sad. Not trying to like go back a question, just really quickly, I'd like to say that a film that I'll maybe never watch again, but was really good, was Boyhood. Oh yeah, Boyhood. I watched it because I was like, maybe I'll like this. And I really like Ethan Hawke. So I was like, okay. And I just, it's Richard Linklater, mm-hmm. isn't it? So I was like, right. Which falls in the next question. Um, but yeah, like I was like, I'll try it. Like I think I, I really like the concept. I was just a bit like, right, going to get on with it a wee bit. But like, I, I think the whole concept's so cool. Yeah, and like I can an appreciate, I can it? appreciate that it's so well made. But I'm yeah. like not going to go on my way to watch it. That's Sorry, I mean, I'll uh, go back to that. But Spider Man No Way Home is pretty emotional. Oh, Spider Man No Way Home. Pretty Even emotional. though we just said no more Marvel. I know. Um, and there was a film in 2016 called Manchester by the Sea, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which was some amazing acting and stuff. Casey Affleck so good in the film and that. Um, but it didn't necessarily make me cry. There's some really sad moments in the film. Just, it's just talking about death and monologues about death and stuff. And I remember being like in a big group going to see that film. There was like five of us. And I was looking around and I think everybody was in tears. Yeah. So that's one of those ones. Um, I just read one of the next questions and it made me think of one for this question. Um, About time with Rachel McAdams and one of the guys from Ex Machina. Domino Gleason. Domino Gleason, him. Um, you, Chris, still hasn't seen About Time. No. I've and I'm telling him he would love this film. It's so good. And it, that always makes me cry. Rachel knows me and my types of films because she recommended Crazy Stupid Love. And I can oh. guarantee you now it's the, <laughs> it the best rom com. Yeah. So good. Me Before You. Sorry, I had to get that in there. Me Before You is the like a, saddest a, film me before you Ever. and marley and me tend to be the two most there's common another one about here. the dog i can't pronounce the name i think it's it's like hatchy or something oh, like that yeah, yeah. um you know thinking of lassie 
No, 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 I'm no. not. It's Hatchie. Um, it's something like that. I might not be pronouncing it right, but it's about the dog where the own spoilers the owner dies, and it sits and waits at the train station for its owner every single day until the dog also dies. Oh and my it, god! It's in Japan somewhere. It's a genuine real story. Like there's a yeah, um, there's a statue for it now at the exact pond that wow. it used to wait at, and it's so sad. Well, let's move on before we all start greeting. Day twenty two, <laughs> a movie by your favorite director. So I guess you quack, need to pick your favourite director. I guess it would be Spielberg. First person that comes to mind, favourite Spielberg film was Jaws. But I also like Richard Linklater. I love Boyhood and I love Before Sunrise and I love um, School of Rock. I was waiting. Well, you never said Wes Anderson, that's great. No, Wes Anderson too. Yeah. I was waiting to get um, Richard Linklater in there to talk about Before Sunrise somewhere because mm-hmm. I just think it needs to be mentioned. But also, is he my favourite director? I don't know. Um, I guess Christopher Nolan could be in there. I would say Dunkirk. Don't know if he'd say he's my favourite, but, you know... Dunkirk technically could be listed as your favourite British film. I technically will, yeah. I feel like I don't know enough, like I don't have a favourite director, it's just films I've seen yeah. enough by these directors. Who did Truman Show? Was it Peter Weir? Peter Weir. Right, if we can say Peter Weir, then mm-hmm. there's Truman Show and he also did um, Dead Poets, so that's maybe a good shout for me. I haven't mentioned the Truman Show. No. I haven't mentioned Truman Show. I'm going to give this a no comment because I don't look at directors. I'm so bad at that kind That's of stuff. Fair. I do apologise. Um, I can. I agree with like some of your answers though. I feel like, yeah. I also love Tarantino, but he's the go-to answer. So everyone yeah. says him. So but my favourite Tarantino film would probably be Pulp Fiction. But. Um, was that me? Is it me? Mm-hmm. Day 23 is a movie with your favourite actress. I'll just get that straight off the back that you use both know. I really love Rachel McAdams for mm-hmm. some reason. I don't really know where that came from. I think it was because my old favourite film was The Vow. Mm. So maybe maybe that one, because I used to... I still love that film, like, so underrated. But, like, I feel like I've seen so much she's in. Like, she's in Doctor Strange, she's in About Time, she's in The Notebook. What else is she in? She's in loads of stuff. Mean Girls. Like, she's just... Yeah, I love shoot. everything she's in. Good Every shoot. time I watch it, I love it. So I feel like anything in it. Uh, Florence Pugh is probably my current favourite actress, but I also love Saoirse Ronan. I've never seen her in it. Well, no, I have. I've seen Ladybug. But I don't so, know. Not Ladybug. So, f- favourite Saoirse Ronan <laughs> film. Favourite Saoirse Ronan film would be Lady Bird. Uh, however, oh, a recent film that she's in that is so good and so underrated is See How They Run. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Have you seen that? No, I've heard of it. No. I totally recommend that. It's such a good time. Um, but favourite Saoirse Ronan film would be Lady Bird. Oh, no. You are right there? No. I, I would say probably... I do love Florence Pugh and Don't Worry Darling was like an amazing film with her but I really like Zoe Saldana mm. Mm. and sorry to bring it up she is Gamora <laughs> in Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy and she's also um, the woman lead in Avatar but I can't remember the name what's her name? Any other day I would know it but you've just put me on the spot and I can't remember uh, Oh, Natiri Okay um, oh, If that's how you say it I just I can't get over how this woman is in like two of the top most like not pain films, grossing. but grossing yeah. films. Like, what do you mean? Like, stop acting, you've got enough money. No, I don't, I'm joking. <laughs> I love you. Keep acting. I think a film, I think there's a film coming out and she's in it. I think. And yeah. I, I'm going to go see it because it'll be nice to see her in her human form <laughs> acting for once instead of being either green or blue. So, yeah. <laughs> right, go for it. Um, 24, your favourite animated movie? Favourite animated film is Moana. So valid. Yeah. I think mine's would be Tangled. Tangled's great too. Um, I also love Lion King. Um, I'm going to say Coco. I've yeah. never seen Coco. Oh my yes, God. I, seen this. I really want to. So good. Is it animated that's not like... Z- 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 Zootropolis would be a good answer for that. Is a I'm great trying answer. to think of something that's not Disney or Pixar. Like, you know, like... Oh. I mean, but you've do, got do, your do, Studio Ghibli stuff. Yeah, Studio Ghibli and DreamWorks, like Shrek and stuff like that. Garfield for you. Shrek. Is Garfield, Garfield count? I, I wouldn't say it's like so. The animated film, it's there is an animated action. film, but it's not that good, but mm. the Garfield, the live oh. action is better. What about Clone Wars? It would be my favourite. No, but like, does that count? Clone Wars, yeah. As an animated film. Yeah, of I was thinking about last night. I really want to watch that again. Uh, Day 25 is a movie you recommend the most. Uh, okay, good question. Um, I think I recommend The Truman Show an awful lot. Yeah. Have you seen that yet? Because I feel like it is a classic and I think a lot of people would have seen it at the time but I think a lot of people don't. It goes under the radar right now. 
um, because it's so long ago. I love the Truman Show. It's kind of they've tried to redo it loads of times and they've not quite got it right. Even yeah. don't even don't worry, darling. It's a take on that the Truman 100%. Show. That's one hundred percent. That's what I thought the whole time. Um, uh, I also think we we both kind of talk about Pleasantville quite a Pleasantville. lot, Pleasantville, which is such an underrated film. You would probably relate. It's Tobey Maguire um, and Reese Witherspoon, like Reece so Witherspoon, underrated. It's really good. Um, I feel like that's one of the ones that I'll like pluck out of nowhere when someone asks me about a film that somehow I always think of it even though I've only seen it once mm-hmm. um, I'd probably also say I recommend Crazy Stupid Love a lot because I think it's kind of a bit for everybody like if you don't like that film I kind of don't trust you <laughs> like it's funny it's emotional it's got great like actors in it like the lineup's amazing like I just think how can you not um, probably about time because I don't, again, why would you not like about time? It's so good. Shrek. Shrek. <laughs> Day 26. Movie with the greatest plot twist. Oh, my God. Um, That's not what I can think about on the spot. Like, I feel like something will come to me, like, later on at, like, 3 a.m. And I'll be like, can't yeah, believe I didn't you know, I was that. thinking about this one. A Marvel answer came to my head, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> what one? I want to know. What's the first film Loki's in? Um, Thor. Thor. It must be that one then. Oh no no no! It's Dark World. You're thinking of when he he dies and then he actually is like disguised as Odin in Rag or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's maybe not in Ragnarok, but it's like I think it's maybe Dark World. You've just watched? No, it was Dad that watched Dark yeah. World. Just said I wouldn't. Just said I wouldn't talk about it. Yeah, but we have to. Um, yeah, it's also we need to be careful we don't spoil too much here. I hate the fact that the biggest plot twist in cinema history is a meme, which is Empire Strikes Back. Uh, yeah, I yeah. am your father. I am your father. Um, yeah, but who doesn't know that? Exactly I mean, I, what I mean. get it can be. I That's get that, I mean. but also it's can the same re- with like Leia. Leia's my sister. Well, uh, but I you're know, like, but, duh. But that moment, but how would you be? If, no, imagine, but back then, but like imagine now. Imagine watching that in 1980 and being Never like. Ever. Imagine you're sitting there watching Empire Strikes Back and he goes, No, I am your I father. I know. You would go, What? You know what I mean? Hashtag <laughs> shook. Yeah. Did you ever watch A Simple Favour with yes. Anna Kendrick? And, um, a Simple like, Favour's a good show. Yeah, I know. I just looked up plot twist movies and it's the first one I knew. Um, that's such a good one because it's good. You, the whole time you're so unlike, you don't know what's going to happen the whole time until it just happens. Get Out's a good plot twist too. Hmm. If you've seen Get Out. I have not. Um, a film called Destroyer with Sebastian Stan mm-hmm. in it. Oh my God. This film does not get talked about even remotely enough. Like, it is so good. It's Nicole Kidman, I think. I'm pretty sure. She's another one that I, like, can't recognise her when she's on a film. Like, I, I don't couldn't, know how. I would walk past her on the street Steve and I would know who she is. She's so weird looking in that. But, like, it's Sebastian Stan and it's... I won't, I won't go into what it is, but basically, like, how it starts and how it ends, you're like... It kind of, like, loops back. And then everything, like the whole time I was watching, I was like, this isn't that good. Like, what's going on? And at the end, I was like, <gasps> oh. Like, it was like such like a moment. Hang on a minute. Best plot twist. Crazy Stupid Love. Well, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Of course. Have you seen Crazy Stupid Love? We're watching That'd it. be good. You should totally me, you, watch it. Me, you, and Gravina. That are our next movie night. Um, there's that. And then The Prestige is a good plot twist. I, I would love to tell you, yeah. but I think I was too flabbergasted that Christian Bale was in this film. <laughs> Shutter Island is a good plot twist and Seven is a good plot twist. There's loads of good ones, man. Oh, I remember not liking Seven and I really need to try and watch it again because I feel like I should love that film. Yeah, Seven's pretty good. Um, So day 27, we can do this quick because we've already probably mentioned all of them, is a movie with your favourite actor. We've already kind of yeah, I touched don't based on all of them. Yeah, really have a favourite actor. My favourite actor of all time would probably be Rowan Atkinson. So my favourite film with him in it would be, I don't know. Bean. Yeah, the Bean movie, Johnny English. Bean. Things like that. Bean. Uh, but I also love, I love, uh, who else do I like? I like DiCaprio, DiCaprio, obviously. I like Brad Pitt a lot. Um, yeah, there's so many I actors. I don't know. Like. I mean, obviously Sebastian Stan's my favourite actor, but I feel like there's got to be something a bit more obscure than that, like a bit more... I just like films. I'm not, I not. I don't sit and watch like Rachel or, like an actor and like watch everything they're in. I don't do that. I've never done that. So probably someone I've seen in the most films would probably be like Meryl Streep, like things yeah. like Mamma Mia, like uh, Devil Wears Prada, like mm-hmm. all that. I think. What ab- What about Andrew Garfield though? I feel like you've seen a decent amount of him in it. Have you not? Well, Spider Man and what's that other film? The 
the amazing Spider-Man. No, the the social, social network. Media, social, social network. Social, social network. No, 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 there's another one about like, and he's blonde in it. Oh, oh yeah, I can't remember what it's called. It's recent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Um, he was so weird in that as well. Like he was, I can't remember the name of it, but he was just like an awful human being in it. And for like, I love him so much. I think he's a very good Spider-Man. The fact that like to watch him be like really awful was just like so weird. So Your weird. Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's The Amazing Spider-Man films are a great answer for the ones that everybody hates. Yeah. But really annoys me because everybody went on about how bad they were and how they're not anywhere near as good as Tobey Maguire's and whatever but then now that No Way Home came out everyone's changed their tune and I'm like (laughs) we where was this energy when we were all trying to get a third one shout out Andrew Garfield I love you I will defend you (laughs) well it's your next day 28 day 28 a good movie from a from a genre you don't like it's pretty hard. I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy with all genres. I don't love horror, um, but yeah, there's plenty. There's plenty of good horror films. Like The Shining's a really good film and all that stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? And there's loads of other good horror films. But yeah. Well, to go back on the answer from earlier, I'd probably say Hush because I don't yeah. like horror films, but I actually did think that was a good film. So. Yeah. Midsummer's a horror film too. That's pretty scary. I don't think I have an answer for this one. I don't really know any genre that I've seen that I don't like. Yeah. Like, I'm sure there's something out there, but I've never probably watched it. What would be it. your favourite genre? Something like a rom com or. Mm-hmm. I'd, I don't I'd probably know, say a thriller. Know, because, be like, I feel like. Thriller. Whatever the heck you would class, like. I guess Dark Academia, like, with, like. Dead Poets and. Yeah. Like, all of those films, like. Sad films. With. No. <laughs> but no, because I wrote, I'm i someone that like, see when you pick up a book and the first line is like, Rachel lives with a terminal illness and she meets her soulmate whose mum just died. And right. you're like, why the heck can I not find a book where somebody doesn't die or somebody's got something? Things like that really annoy me, so no. But <laughs> I'd say like, I love anything that's found family, um, like books, TV shows, films. I think that's my favourite like trope. Okay. So... I guess that would be my favourite genre, I guess. Or like action films with like Marvel and stuff. But again, that that comes down to the film family because it's the characters I like, it's not necessarily the films. Um, But Day 29 is your favourite movie trilogy. I feel like the obvious answer is either Dark Knight or Before Sunrise trilogy for me. Um, Oh man, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of my favourite trilogies go on to be more than trilogies. A yeah. film series that I haven't mentioned out of all of these is another one that... It's definitely not people dislike it. I think a lot of people do like it. I like it a lot more than others, and it is, like, in my top five favourite movies ever, and it's Rush Hour. I was going to say, I can't believe you've not mentioned Rush Hour It's just yet. not come up, but uh, I love the Rush Hour trilogy, yeah. and I can't tell you, like, these are great films and stuff, because they're not. But they're so good. But they're so much fun. Trilogy's more than one, but... Just, just three. Yeah, just right. three. Oh. I know. Well, you could. I mean, you could say like, um, I don't know. You could say like the Avengers trilogy, right? But then but that would be like Avengers Assemble, that's Age not. of Ultron, and then what's the third one? Infinity War. So then it goes to you know what I mean. So there's but then more there's than, Endgame. Uh, I mean, so there's so more like, than three. That's what I was going to say. Is like yeah. So the Iron Man trilogy, the Captain America trilogy, Thor. Yeah. Well, but Thor is more than three now, but. Yeah, I was because I was going to say like the Hunger Games, but the Hunger Games is actually four films because it was split up into I was, part I was, one and two. I was going to say Twilight, but then like that's more than, more yeah. than three. I've learned that's five now. To watch, yeah, that this yeah. Month. yeah. About to watch Twilight. Yeah. He's never seen them, and Iona's making him watch them. And I'm I'm going to rewatch them for the love of the podcast. This is the skin of a killer, Bella. Um, oh, it's your shot. Day thirty, last question. That's the last one. Day thirty is your all-time favorite movie. We've come to this, we've mentioned the whole time. My favourite yep. movie, it changes all the time um, between three or four, but um, I'd probably... S- Jaws is my favourite film. Okay. Or um, Star Wars. I'd say currently, probably Barbie, just because it's out, but otherwise I always go back to the ten things I hate about you. Yeah. Mm, I mean, I don't think I need to mention Dead Boat Society and Perks Been All Flower again, but if you're going to make me, then I'd probably I'd probably have to say Dead Poets now. But I can't just push perks aside. I can't do it. Like it, they have to. It. They have to rein up there together. Like I can't change it. I just can't. Okay. Well, we've done it. Thirty questions. 
make sure you stay tuned to the Good Bit Twitter, the Good Bit X, Jesus. at the Good Bit Pod uh, over the next 30 days or so. We'll start it and uh, we will, I'll, I'll, I'll just be my answers unfortunately, but I don't want to, like, I tried to do this before on Instagram and I didn't like the fact that I always like wrote a wee paragraph about it and it slowed me down. I was like, I can't be bothered writing this paragraph today. I'm just going to post a wee gif or something yeah. all of the moment, you know. Um, I think it'd be fun to go through the questions, but this was a nice wee preview to get my mind ticking for it. So, I feel like there's just you, far too many films, there is isn't there? Like, far too many. I mean, I guess it's a good thing that we can think of this many. Like, I feel like we did repeat ourselves, but also we yeah, pulled we some good answers out. I'm proud of us. Yeah. I'm proud of all three of us. I'm proud That's of you guys. It. Thank you for coming on and helping me out for this one. You're going, so welcome. Going solo this week. Hopefully we're back. Solo. Film people didn't really like that we liked. Solo. <laughs> <laughs> Rogue One. I like Solo oh, too. I love that film. Chris isn't a big fan of Rogue One, oh, are you? No, no, no. I am a fan. All Star Wars films I like. Um, I just don't understand why people rate Rogue One higher than some of the actual Star Wars films yeah, themselves. Okay. I'd sometimes go as far as it could be my favourite, but I would need to rewatch them and reevaluate. That's that fair. It's it's a very well made film, very well acted, good story. My problem with it is, you ready for this? I'm I ready. don't. I can't get behind the film where everybody just dies, and you know it's going to happen. Okay, fair enough. As opposed to all these great adventures and stuff. I get it, I get it. You kind of know what's going to happen because you've been told the kind of backstory in the first... Yeah, but you know okay. none of them are in the next film. So. Hey, I got a new appreciation for this film once I watched Andor, so maybe. I just maybe. thought it was like sort of like a very concluded ending. Like there was no more to think about. Like that was it. They got you know, that's the a great away answer. and like done. That's a good, that's a good yeah. way to think about it. Absolutely. Let's do this all over again with TV shows. I know it's okay. not your podcast. We can do it without the podcast. No, no, we'll do it with TV shows and the podcast. Absolutely. But I'm my time to shine. Yeah. I love a good TV we did show. About criminal Minds at the we start. So to. we did. <laughs> we need some. We have some we good answers for this. Sure. <laughs> we'll bring Keris back to do that. <laughs> Popular well, demand. Everybody, comment I'm, down below if you want Keris back. I just to be here tonight. I'm kind of always here, so. <laughs> She's sleeping on this chair tonight. She's not moving. Yeah. She's not moving. The well, listen. Uh, hopefully, the whole point of this was just to test the new equipment. So hopefully, it's sounding good. Imagine if it didn't record any audio. I'm doing this myself. Um, thank you very much for tuning in this week everybody thanks for helping me out gals you're welcome uh, we'll see you all next week on the Good Bit Podcast take care of yourselves and we'll catch you all down the road